Hey everyone, I'm going to be running through a modification that I've seen for the Behringer ECM 8000 measurement microphone. Now these guys retail for about $99 to $120 in Australia and they're designed to measure the acoustics of a room for sign sweeps and so on. But I've heard that there's a modification that you can do that makes them into much better recording quality microphones. So I'm going to give that a crack. So what you do is, apparently you open it up and you take out a lot of the internals of it which are designed for a stable uh, frequency response, which is almost like pencil flat from like some 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. But all of those electronics in there introduce a lot of noise into the microphone. So what you do is you, you take out a lot of the internals to it reduces stability but the less you have in there the quieter it's going to be and you replace the capsule which is kind of publicly accepted to be a old Panasonic uh, capsule which you are then replacing with another Panasonic capsule. You place it with the place the WM60 with the WM61 if my memory is serving correctly I'll check along the way and then you do the delinquents mod on the capsule where you uh, disable the internal FET in favor of, I don't know, running something else in the microphone. I'm not really uh, an electronics inventor. I just know how to follow instructions. So, yeah, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening one of these guys up, fiddling around with it, and then measuring the results before and after and then seeing if the, the Bill, Wall, Bill Wall audio hack for the Behringer ECM 8000 is worth it. Let's get into it. So yeah, I know very little about electronics. I can put stuff together, I can solder, but like how stuff properly works, I've got no idea, so I just follow instructions. So, zoom in like that, look at that, look at those schematics, that's direct tap. I will be attempting to follow those. Um, so I guess if I can do it, almost anyone can do it. So pretty much the, apparently the two things that you need are you need to swap the capsule out for a Panasonic WM61A. Uh, this is him here, tiny, tiny guy. I got him off of eBay. Uh, since Panasonic stopped measuring, making them properly, uh, they are getting harder to find. But eBay, uh, people have got them on eBay. Apparently there's a lot of knockoffs as well that you got to look out for. So. I got it from someone who I thought was reputable. So yeah, I got got that guy. Uh, you need to do the Linkwitz mod on it. Um, you can just Google that Linkwitz mod, where you there's a tiny, tiny little bit of metal there that connects the inside to the shield. And if you cut that, apparently it bypasses the FET inside this and makes for a much but uh, you get a much greater uh, dynamic range out of it. Uh, so um, you need to do that, and then the other thing is I need some Zener diodes. Now online they recommended 12 volts, but apparently the, the mic capsule is 10 volts. So just to be sure, I got a 12 volt one and I got a got some 10 volts. Um, so that'll help out doing that. So you, that's all you need. And then just disconnect a bunch of stuff inside the microphone, and then apparently it runs amazingly. So we'll see how it goes. I'll first do some tests on the mic so we can have a have a control and see our starting point. So I've got the mic just sitting here now, it's not recording anything directly, it's just sitting on the desk here, running into my sound devices mix pre channel one. It's where your gain is set. Just a little bit over it's just like ten o'clock. To there, uh, running into the line in of the 003 to bypass the Preamps, and this is currently what we are looking at. So you can see all of that self noise. That's me talking, obviously, but you can see all that self noise down that low frequency range over here. That's it's pretty nuts. I've got headphones on, and I can hear quite a level of hiss. So that's kind of what we're working with the bass. I'll take a snapshot of that, and so we've got it as a a uh, solid test result. And for reference, I am just going to record some acoustic guitar with the stock standard 
microphone. Once again, mic into the sound devices, DigiDesign into Ableton. When it comes time to open your microphone, it's a very simple process. There will be three screws here, here and here. Mine are under the label, which you just need to peel off. You need a jeweler's screwdriver. Just unscrew those, get a pair of pliers, and you just very gently pull the circuit board out. Now there will actually be three, two wires running from the mic capsule on this end down through the shaft, two to the circuit board. I've already disconnected mine, but if you're just inspecting it and you don't want to disconnect them, just be careful. So the head of the mic, uh, mine was able to pop off pretty easy. Some people have had trouble with them. They just seem to be glued there. There's no screw or anything like that, so just kind of loosen it and pull it out. There you can see the back of the microphone and the cables which will be running down inside the mic shaft. So now that you have your PCB removed, it's time to start removing the components that you don't need anymore. I've done some research on Bill Wall's site and kind of mapped out a bit where the parts are just to double check to make sure I'll be doing the right thing. So here, I'll try to get into screen for you. There we go. I have marked in black the parts that don't need to be on the board anymore. So you can see here is the capacitors. And here's the capacitors, uh, the resistors, uh, this little little dude here, he doesn't need to be there anymore either. Then down the end there's a lot of cutting. It says uh, four capacitors, two resistors. If you flip it over, just this guy here as well. So in the description I will put up a list of what needs to be taken out and what can stay. So it's time to get soldering. Here's all the parts we've taken off. Here's our slimmer and trimmer new board. Leave that there so you can get a um, good picture of it. So note that the Zener diode here, I've replaced it. It comes with a 6 volt. Uh, Bill Wall recommends a 12 volt, that I've used a 10 volt uh, to match the microphone. So we will see the mic capsule. Now what you need to do is just you need to put in two jumpers down here to replace the resistors that ran straight to the XLR outputs or else you won't get any sound. So I'm just going to put those in now. And here's a finished product. So you can see here that a lot of these components have been taken out along the way. So the these are two capacitors, there's four capacitors here, three resistors there. I've put in some jumper cables here, over here as well. That's so the so you're still actually getting an audio signal through the microphone. So you'll notice here, even from the start, so there's I mean it's a little hard to see, but there's three cables coming out of here instead of two now. Because that's now instead of having like a joint like a ground and uh dump, I think it was called, I don't know. On the microphone you use you sever a connection and then now you've got three running here. So I've had to replace the resistor here uh, that's a that's a originally that didn't even have a resistor on there I just remembered I think that's a 10k then there's a jumper I replaced the Zener diode with a 10 volt uh, here is it's an original capacitor I've replaced this capacitor because the in the bill wall sketches it had a different uh, capacitance so I've gone and I've swapped that out that one's a 47 picofarad capacitor um, with 50 volts, uh, those resistors are still the same, those little dudes still the same, just, um, and um, jumper cables, yeah, and so I'll put them all back together, we'll give them some testing, see how we go. So on the underside here as well, flip it over, I've kept two of the capacitors and had to take one of them out, so capacitor three, no capacitor two, he came out, good stuff. And back to the original test again. 
there is the modified microphone now sitting on the desk. Mix pre, gain just over 10 into the 003, set to line with the volume all the way down. Okay, so have a look here. So now the, the volume has changed. So you can see that the sensitivity is a lot lower than it was before. So everything the same, and that is quite a bit quieter. Now you can see that little low bit of volume there. So a little, little hump in the low frequencies, where is that? Looks, uh, it's at just about 50 hertz. All right, so I'm gonna bump the volume up on the mix pre, just kinda get in the same ballpark as before, can sort of, they can see what's, uh, if the noise has changed. Winding it up. Okay, so, So now that is, ooh, look at that. It's almost full on the, the mix pre. That's about four o'clock. I can just bit over that dial there, a bit over four. So that is very high. And the, okay, so the, the low rumble's gone, but the 50, the very low rumble's gone, but the 50 hertz is still there. And it seems that you need a lot more volume to gain it. So I'll, I'll run the test on the guitar again and we'll see what it sounds like. As you can see, just the microphone, a little bit over a foot. I recorded it just before with the same settings and it is very quiet due to the lower sensitivity, I guess. So I'm just going to dial this gain up. Going to dial it up to where it was similar to before. So say three o'clock is where I'm setting it at the sound devices. Nothing else has changed. Okay, so I've only just realized how ghetto it is to be filming a computer screen where I can just do a screencast, but we're here now. So up the top is the, that's the stock audio clip of the guitar. In the middle is the Bill Wall mod with the gain turned up to 10 on the did you design and then down the bottom here that was the same Bill Wall mod but with the gain in the same place so you can see there's quite a bit of difference there to there to there so the volume is definitely dipping I'm gonna play them back I'm gonna play the original in the left and then the uh, the new one in the right so you can hear the difference in volume if you've got headphones uh, also I've got the fab filter uh, EQ up just so we can actually have a look at the frequencies. So the side chain will be the will be the modified mic Whoa, and the original will be the unmodified mic. So here you go So there you have it. Does the Bill Wall mod make the Behringer ECM $8,099 microphone worth $1,000? No, it doesn't. The, the self noise is lower in the sub frequency range, but because of the severely decreased sensitivity of it, then you need to compensate for that in your gain staging, which introduces a lot more noise back into to your signal. So, I'm not quite sure what's, what's happened there, whether that's just how it is. I've followed the instructions pretty closely, and this is kind of what we've ended up with. However, I've still seen other, um, other schematics and hacks online for this guy that I'm keen to try. I'm not ready to give up on him yet, but the, the Bill Wall audio, not quite what I was looking for. Cheers.